Welcome to the 13th episode of uh, International Relations Capsule for Shankar IAS Academy. Our topic today is Afghanistan. The recent developments there, Afghanistan peace process has entered a new stage. But before we start, we should very quickly recall the history of Afghanistan in the recent years. It has been a turbulent nation, very tumultuous history it has had for several years. And we could at least start with the Soviet occupation of Afghanistan, which took place in 1979. Soviet Union sent its forces into Afghanistan to bring about some stability. But the whole world opposed it because Soviet Union was sending forces into a non-aligned country. And the trouble started from there because various terrorist groups, uh, various tribal groups, etc., started fighting against the Soviet Union from 1979 onwards. And support for this came from the United States, Pakistan, China, Saudi Arabia, etc. Generally in the world itself, there was public opinion against the Soviet Union for having sent their troops into Afghanistan. But for several years, Afghanistan kind of held the peace. Very unpleasant, very, uh, uh, very not very peaceful peace, but there was some kind of order because the Soviet troops were there. But there was great demand from all over the world, including the United Nations General Assembly, because the Security Council, the resolution was uh, vetoed by the Soviet Union. But there was a demand from the General Assembly to withdraw from Afghanistan. India took a rather uh, non-committal line. We felt that the presence of the Soviet Union had kept the peace in Afghanistan. And therefore, we did not remand vociferously for Soviet Union to withdraw from Afghanistan. And this was concerned, considered to be a Soviet, pro-Soviet approach by India. So we were also under criticism. But uh, after some time, the uh, situation became more difficult. Taliban emerged as the major dissenting force against um, Soviet Union. And uh, so Taliban emerged as a, as a major power. And then finally, the Soviet Union withdrew from Afghanistan. But contrary to the expectation that once the Soviet Union would withdraw, there would be peace and there should be unity among the tribals and others in Afghanistan, the situation got much worse. And in 1996, the civilian government was overthrown and we had uh, a Taliban government, Taliban took over. And this was a bizarre experience. It was an experience of chaos because Taliban was very extremist in their ways, very dictatorial, fundamentalist, terrorist-oriented group, the Taliban. And uh, it continued with various difficulties, problems, intense suffering for Afghanistan, etc. And then the, we, India had always spoken to the West talking about terrorism, the origin of terrorism being in Afghanistan, but not much attention was given to that. And they thought, the world thought that Taliban will somehow uh, continue as a government. And then of course, 2001, we had the 9-11, and very quickly, it was traced, the 9-11 incident, the bombing in New York, was traced to very many terrorist groups in Afghanistan. In fact, it was the same terrorists whom we let off from Indian custody and went back to Afghanistan, were the same people who masterminded the 9-11. So, United States, under President Bush, took very serious action and decided to invade Afghanistan in order to punish the Taliban 
and the other terrorists. So a war on terrorism was declared, declared in 2001. Um, and uh, this, so a, a civilian government was established. First, we had Hamid Karzai in 2001. In 2014, we had uh, Ashram Ghani. So on the one hand, there was a civilian government. And at the same time, Taliban continued. I mean, Taliban was ousted by the United States, but terrorism did not end there. Terrorism continued. And the United States had to stay on till now, all these years from 2001, now it is 2021. So about 20 years, so United States has been bogged down in Afghanistan. In United States itself, there was a lot of public opinion against American forces losing their lives in Afghanistan. Terrorism, terrorism had not ended. And this experience of the US troops somehow holding the peace, supporting the, uh, the, the civilian government, and also fighting the Taliban continuously. And so a stage was reached and uh, people felt that this had to be ended. In fact, President Biden referred to it as the unending war. But not that his predecessors had not tried. And Mr. Obama wanted to withdraw and therefore in preparation for withdrawing, he sent fresh troops into Afghanistan so that they can fight the war quickly defeat the Taliban and uh, keep another force, another government in Afghanistan and withdraw. But that did not happen because uh, terrorism continued and there was no way that United States troops could withdraw without throwing the country into total chaos. But still uh, many so US troops were withdrawn from Afghanistan and um, gradually and slowly Taliban became more and more powerful, and it became necessary for the United States to finally start negotiations with Taliban, because it was necessary for them to withdraw, and they could not withdraw without some kind of a reconciliation in Afghanistan with the various elements of the Northern uh, Coalition, the Ghani's uh, government, there were all other kinds of uh, leaders who have been earlier there. They were all involved in this, and uh, it was very necessary to come to some kind of an understanding. And um, during uh, uh, Trump's uh, period, this discussion started with various elements, including uh, the Taliban, and most of the discussions took place in Doha, in Qatar. Uh, India was, of course, not party to any of these negotiations because we are not considered an immediate neighbor. But we were engaged in, even in the kind of all this uh, confusion and chaos, India was a partner with the legitimate government in Afghanistan to provide humanitarian relief, to give them some support, build some hospitals, we also built a parliament house. So India was not involved either in the negotiations or in the conflict, but we had also Unfortunately, or, uh, some of our people lost their lives in the process. But India continued to invest in Afghanistan in the hope that there will be peace and uh, there will be an Afghanistan owned by Afghans, led by Afghans, and a kind of non-aligned Afghanistan was what we were, we were envisaging. Meanwhile, President Trump declared that he will withdraw from Afghanistan, whatever may happen by Christmas and um, uh, 2020. But uh, that also did not take place, though there was an agreement, there has been an agreement for about a year or so. It did not result in the withdrawal of the US troops. And so President Biden inherited a chaotic Afghanistan with an agreement in place with Taliban. but unable to implement it. So he made a review. He wanted United States troops to withdraw. Only about 2,500 of them, but there are also other troops from NATO, etc. So he uh, began an exercise of review 
now we have the results of the review and the idea now is to have a fresh negotiations on the basis of the doha agreement so re reappointed the negotiator uh, to continue the negotiations with the taliban and this is going on but uh, though taliban is not uh, really uh, attacking american troops specifically they are caught in the crossfire when the american soldiers have been in danger too so all this necessitated a, a fresh approach and that is the news that uh, we are receiving and uh, the first effort has been to somehow form a government with mr ghani as the the present president and the taliban and other interested uh, you know communities to form a government and then hand over power mr ghani himself will hand over power and then the united states could leave but then mr ghani said that that would not be a right process and he was willing to announce elections and if elections are held and whoever wins of course the presumption is that taliban will have a majority but whatever mr ghani has said that there could be a an election and that could be the beginning of american withdrawal india was not a participant in these discussions but sometimes we were invited to observe the discussions but we have not had any direct interaction with taliban but right from the days when the united nations started the negotiations on afghanistan many many years ago even then india was not invited as a party to these negotiations the five permanent members and immediate neighbors because we don't have an immediate border with uh, afghanistan and therefore we were excluded and it was also partly because uh, pakistan objected to india's presence because they knew that they were supportive of taliban and they wanted to control the whole exercise so that they could make concessions to the americans and become part of a, a process of reconciliation and they did not want india's inclusion in that so but now the new proposal that which has come from president biden in the form of a letter by the secretary of state mr blinken to the president mr ghani and also abdullah abdullah who is the chairman of the reconciliation group in afghanistan and uh, he put forward a proposal Uh, that a fresh discussion should take place under the auspices of the united nations and the venue should be in turkey in istanbul and uh, as together with other countries which were involved in these negotiations he suggested that india should also be part of uh, these discussions and um, a new uh, meeting could be held under the united nations uh, auspices and uh, this is the proposal that the united states has put forward but in between just before that the uh, russians called a meeting in moscow to which we were not uh, not invited um, but uh, nobody is objecting so far to uh, the conference that has been proposed uh, in uh, Uh, in istanbul but one of the conditions for that is uh, ceasefire and um, if the elections are held taliban should participate in it so so including india as a partner in these negotiations was something that was welcomed by president ghani taliban has not formally reacted but they have not objected to that and if this meeting take place this will be the first time that india will be talking to taliban or at least in a conference where we would be uh, participating in these uh, discussions so you since you cannot us cannot disengage from afghanistan unless this happens the this particular initiative by the united states is considered to be uh, considered to be a, a way forward but 
since this meeting has not taken place, we do not know what the shape of things will be. Mr. Khalizad continues as the special representative and um, the discussions in um, Turkey, that is in uh, Istanbul under UN auspices, may lead to a solution to the Afghan problem. But the whole process, nobody can put a time on it. Nobody can be uh, kind of, uh, you know, optimistic about the outcome because there are so many aspects to it. And the choice that Pakistan and Taliban will have is to have a Taliban dominated, if not a Taliban uh, centered kind of a government in Afghanistan. This will be a problem for us because last time when Afghanistan, when Taliban was in power in Afghanistan, they increased their, uh, their you know, terrorist activities in Jammu and Kashmir. They destroyed uh, many traditional, many historic and uh, uh, of, of, you know, the Buddha statues. And then they banned music and children, women were not educated. And therefore it was a, some kind of a primitive kind of a government that was there. So nobody wants this to come back, but we don't yet know whether Taliban has had a change of heart or not. But United States says, seems to be determined to find a solution. And uh, that is where uh, we are now. Uh, when uh, the Defense Secretary of the United States, uh, General Austin, came to New Delhi the other day, he was not very sure as to what the length of stay of the uh, US troops will be. So they still have not set a time limit. They have not set a, a specific plan. But Mr. Biden would like to withdraw U.S. troops on the 1st of May. And that is not, a, not very far away. It's only in a, a few days later. And therefore, the whole situation remains uncertain. Uh, many civilians have been killed in 2020 alone. Something like 3,000 uh, civilians uh, were killed. The Doha Agreement has not been implemented. And uh, so there is a situa situation which is very, very, very complex. So we have to watch how the US proposal develops. And the uh, US government has attached a certain amount of urgency and importance to this initiative. And um, so the once this conference is held, then um, there could be more developments. But at the same time, the United States, Russia, and China are um, consulting each other in order to uh, find a, 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 an agenda for the Istanbul conference. So on the one hand, there is the Russian effort together with these people. And at the same time, you have the proposal for the uh, Istanbul conference. And uh, there is no clear path yet set for it. India is now going to be part of this uh, exercise. As far as India's position is concerned, as I said, we have been involved in the reconstruction and uh, humanitarian assistance to uh, Afghanistan, in spite of all the chaos that was uh, taking place. But at the same time, the uh, hope is that the Istanbul conference will lead to some kind of a reconciliation. And our position is, India's position is that it should be a, a, a government of the Afghan people and um, an Afghan owned and Afghan led, Afghan uh, controlled government is what we are hoping will happen. And the foreign minister of uh, the Ghani government was in Delhi, They're happy with India's involvement. And uh, therefore, they are expecting that India's participation will uh, move the whole discussion to a, another level. But there again, the attitude of Pakistan is not known, because if they find a solution, then Pakistan will not be anymore 
useful for the United States. Because at the moment, Mr. Biden believes that Pakistan is a key country in this. And therefore, it is necessary for the process to uh, continue. But at the same time, Pakistan would like to stall it because the more this uh, situation continues, it might be helpful for Pakistan to build its, its strength with Taliban and try to bring about something that uh, is acceptable to Pakistan. So our interest is basically to have peace in Afghanistan, where are the terrorist activities from Afghanistan should cease in Jammu and Kashmir. So ours is a very benign interest in Afghanistan because we have seen the suffering of the Afghanistan people for many, many years. Many foreign countries have tried to dominate Afghanistan. And that's why it is called the graveyard of empires. Nobody could dominate Afghanistan. They are very good fighters. And therefore, no foreign country has been able to completely dominate them, including the Soviet Union, which was a superpower at that time. So the history of Afghanistan is sad, and uh, the people have suffered for many, many years. And everybody is looking forward to some kind of a solution where uh, there can be an Afghan government, which is a popular government, maybe through an election. Mr. Ghani may have to leave, but still there could be a government. And our interest is to see that it will be a balanced government and not an entirely Taliban government. So this is the situation. I think we have to watch for what happens after this conference starts. But the initiative taken by President Biden is very decisive, very uh, path-breaking in the sense that new people have been brought into the discussion. And following the same agreement that was reached in Doha, Taliban has no reason to feel aggrieved because they are continuing to be a party to the whole settlement. Uh, but since they were removed from the government forcefully by the Americans, they would very much want to come back. And that would be their objective. Pakistan's objective would be to continue to be a major factor in these negotiations. And our interest is to see that uh, peace comes back to Afghanistan. And the United States would certainly want the troops to be withdrawn because they are still being accused of unnecessarily losing American troops in Afghanistan. So this is the situation from the point of view of the examination. You should know exactly what the positions of these countries are and um, uh, know the, the background clearly that if something happens between now and the examination, you might understand what exactly prompted the solution. So we can only wait and see what progress is made. For the time being, we need to just recall that the importance is that United States has promised to withdraw on the 1st of May, whether it would be possible. Otherwise, there could be an extension. Maybe Taliban will be asked to continue its ceasefire, and then negotiations will continue. Thank you very much.